it's, it's a real farmhouse which was creating wool and milling. And then it became a dairy farm during the war, during the Second World War. The agricultural past of this farm, I feel we need to retain, keep, keep some, some rawness to it. Well, simplicity. And simplicity. We only used local materials, um, used a lot of reclaimed materials. And I thought, what would a farmer do? And I had this pile, which still had the leftovers of the Cotswold stone that we used, had some leftovers of the brick that we used, and had the leftovers of the concrete. And so I just build out of this. So whatever comes out of this, as it comes in, or as you f see fit whilst you're building the structure, use it. We are in the long room which is our favorite afternoon room. I went outside and I picked the sort of, they were literally sort of what wildflowers were out and brought them into the room. And just the yellow just felt right, even though we wanted to use pink. The yellow somehow brought the room alive. This room was very special to the, to the design process and it has double exposure. There's one thing very important about this room, which is why we kept the walls very plain, is the movement of the light. And the way the light hits the walls is the most beautiful thing in, in the house. It's very hard to bring any kind of pattern. And even though we feel terrible that the tapestry is there, every other piece of fabric we've found hasn't worked. Every room of the house is lime-rendered, lime and they're all from wonderful English companies. It likes cream, it likes Love being creamy. just neutral, loves peachy cream, loves grey. I like to have a long bath every night and read. My bathroom's really my sitting room, so that is where all my books are. It's completely book-lined, and we found some beautiful old a panelling that made the division between the bedroom and the bathroom. Uh, all the icons come from Dick Temple in London. Before we ever moved in, we camped in a tent in the field. I woke up really early on the first morning and came into the house and there was this sort of horrible little link between the old kitchen and the house, a sort of leaky, spooky corner. And I remember I walked in and I, I literally, I just saw it as a curve. It was almost as if I got an impression of something that wasn't here yet. And then it sort of solved all the problem of transition between the spaces. It all swirled, so Well, and actually the trans transition's a real pleasure. You, you, it's, a, it's one of the nicest spaces now. And the kitchen has always moved, pretty much every century. And we moved it to uh, an extension. The outhouse. To, the, to what used to be the outhouse. And we chose a different way to build it, which is a shuttered concrete, because that took us back to the post-war concrete era. We, always, we were always very inspired by uh, Haddon Hall. And one night, gloomy night, we just started drawing on the walls of the, of the study. Uh, and we all drew those leaves, those oak leaves everywhere. <laughs> directly on the plasterwork. And the farm used to be covered in oak trees. And then the rest is just a collection of objects. A lot of Paris flea markets or travel to. We'll spend most of our time looking for what is a local traditional ceramic. First thing in the morning is the best because it's just coffee and you go outside and you let all the animals out. Just see it again you know at the moment the mornings are really amazing because it's finally started to rain so it's like seeing everything come back to life 